Hey, and we're back, I think. Um, boy, was that embarrassing. But hey, it, ex- it establishes a lot of things about this this DLC. Um, the Sierra Madre is obviously very fat. Some kind of view up here, eh? God, excuse me. Sierra Madre is where a different thing is set. The Mojave is rather flat, but you can see that this is very vertical. And, you know, your first death by falling will usually fill you in pretty quick on that fact. Whether or not it's accidental. It'll also remind you to fucking save your game, you big dummy dumbhead dumbass. So you don't have to stop LPing. You can just keep playing. No reason, I just felt like it. Yep. Yep. So, Fallout New Vegas, right? I've, I've been so fucking turned around. So let us, let us, I will close the book on this. Fallout is a game that is set after the end of the war the with some stuff happening. I will declare now is the time to stop talking about that. Um, New Vegas is primarily about the conflict between the capitalistic Caesars. Nope, fuck. Why am I so bad today? <laughs> the capitalistic Mr. House, who runs New Vegas, which is to say the actual casino part of New Vegas, the fun part. Um the NCR, New California Republic. I mentioned them, but they're one of the biggest forces for good. And Well, good is relative, but they're one of the bigger forces for really anything in New Vegas. Weapon binding rituals are cool. So I intentionally brought... Um, I intentionally got a lot of extra armor so I could wear it. Just to show it off for the sake of, uh... Huh. So somehow this... Like, look at this. Look what I'm wearing. And yet it has a higher armor than this. Bye. So let's try this one. See? Not much better. I feel like the hat kind of ruins it. There we go. Easy peasy. You know, that hat ruins a lot of my armors. I feel like I should find a new one. I think I'll know what I'm getting. I'm good on wet legs outfits, I think. Yeah. Oh, this one's full. Okay, cool. That one needs some work. Yeah, one of the things that I... um don't really like about the Dark Souls DLCs is that they really expect you to come in like ready to get fucked but with this one um, they're like hey he dump all your shit in this trunk don't come too prepared you know because we're going to give you some cool stuff anyway oh shit so I'm also playing in survival mode and anytime your limbs get hurt well anytime you get hurt your limbs do as well and eventually that'll that'll kill you What should I even go in with? I'll go in with this. I haven't used this a lot. I think this is a scorpion. Or it's based off of it. In some cases, you... You're going the wrong way. You actually have to pay to, uh... Use the, the name of a gun. Great. Worthless. You know, you can probably go to, you can probably go here and see this. Oh, fuck. I just realized that I forgot what I was talking about, but I just remembered. See, New Vegas is primarily between Mr. House, oh, hell yeah. Caesar's Legion, and the NCR. Caesar's Legion is new for the series. They're just literally dudes who emulate the Roman Empire. Got anything 
soldier I can fight with? As far as they know, um, because in many cases they actually get a bunch of shit wrong. Sure, right behind you. Hold on. Here we go. Well then, let's get to trading. Um, let's let's give them some weapons. I feel like that'll go poorly. Yeah, why not? Hunting rifle's good and reliable. Nothing wrong with that. I guess I'll need ammo, too. I'm not sure how it works in this game. All right. Let's save there. So we don't have another oopsie. Hell yeah, iguana on a stick. Iguana on a stick is an item from the very first Fallout. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's in the before times, and the before times is 2050. I love that. Oh. Where was it? It was so small it got obscured by this guy. Here it is. I love scorpions. Back when I was a kid, uh, I played so much of the original Fallout that... Uh, I had memorized how much hit points, how many hit points the Rad Scorpion had, the default Rad Scorpion. I think it was 38. I don't know why that, of all things, I can remember flawlessly. Or at least remember that I can remember it. That was the same year I failed a science test, actually. Yeah, how crazy was it before that war? All they had was racism. I kind of wish that Fallout 4 had a more had a had a had a harsher intro. I feel like that might be a thing to say, but like the past is so idyllic and shit, but part of the theming of Fallout has always been, you know, look to the future no matter what it is and how shitty it is. And the past always has stuff to be ashamed of. And Fallout... You know, this has really turned into more me complaining about Fallout 4 than it has me playing Honest Hearts. Anyway. I kind of wish that the intro of Fallout 4 was like... It just kind of showed that it wasn't all good. I'm not really sure what I'm asking for here cuz like if anything else, it would take the it would make the intro take way longer. And like nobody wants that. The intro is already so long. Let me see what I should even pop here. The issue is that I'm full. I guess I can give you more junk, right? Crack it open. Well then, let's get to trading. What a fearsome beast. <laughs> Yeah, I'm noticing a weird bug wherein... Why not? Clear it out so I don't have to do it later. A weird bug in which... Uh, exiting the critical hit or VATS screen, like, camera angle, will cause the game to, like... Or rather, they... they oh! It's just walking into there. Where? Oh, there they are. Laid out. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it more. Hua. Fighting time. Fighting time. 
Who's that voice actor? If I ever go to a convention again, I should really make him say that. He might hate that. One time, uh... Oh, it's Under Us. My friend Robert brought up the fact that Robbie Damon had been in uh, Breadwinners at a convention to him. Sorry, that was a grammatical nightmare. While we were at a convention, guest starring Robbie Damon, a voice actor, he played Ryuji in Persona 5. Uh, my friend Robert mentioned that he had been in a show called Breadwinners to him. And yes, Robbie Damon was in this cringy, crappy animated cartoon on Nickelodeon. In I was going to say Nickelodeon's Dark Age, but I think that's still ongoing, right? Yes, actually. I was just there. The Thunder Lizard is what Brontosaurus means. Tyrannosaurus actually means uh, tyrant. Tyrannosaurus Rex is a uh, tyrant king. Right. What can I tell you? Tell me a little more about Joshua Graham. He's been the chief of our tribe since he came back to the valley. He went off to the civilized world years ago to fight a war. That didn't go well. Well, what happened to him? You see his face, you'll understand. The only recent war I know of is Caesar's Legion attacking Hoover Dam. two civilized tribes fight over something as small as a dam. You'd be surprised what civilized tribes will fight over. <laughs> now, you sound like Joshua. He always tells me that tribal life is better. That I should stay here and forget the outside world. It makes a little more sense whenever... Because you always hear about like the, the village elder who's like, Oh, you mustn't leave the village. It's bad fuck out there. But... For someone who worked for a fascist government, because I got distracted from it again, but yes, Caesar's Legion are a fascist uh, group. But uh, who for someone to come back from that and be like, dude, it's fucked out there. Yeah, you can take their word for it. But normally it's full of bullshit whenever someone's like, forget about the world outside. Must be some mighty civilized folks who built that. I don't have any more questions. Let's talk about something else. Who are these fellas? White legs. Nasty bunch. They've been raiding deeper into Zion ever since New Canaan was wiped out. Wait, what? New Canaan was wiped out? How? That's what Joshua said. White legs came down from Great Salt Lake in force fell on New Canaan before they could mount a defense. Joshua found some of the survivors led by a man named Daniel. Most of them have fled the valley, but Daniel stayed on with the Sorrows tribe. He and Joshua have been arguing over whether to stand and fight the White Legs, or take the Sorrows and the Dead Horses out of the valley. Where do they come from? That's the weird part. Normally the White Legs keep to the Great Salt Lake, I don't know what brought them down this far south. I want to know more about you. What can I tell you? Why are you called Follows Chalk? Our advanced scouts leave chalk signs to mark places rich with game. I'm not a full scout yet, so I follow the marks and guide the hunters. What are all those tattoos? Dead horses mark ourselves to commemorate our hunts. When a hunter takes a great beast, or when a youth goes on his first hunt, he gets a tattoo. Tell me about your tribe. We came up in the land of the dead horse. Though, why the back when folks called it that, I got no hint. We raided. We fought. We lost. Our enemies drove us back into Zion, and we would have died if it hadn't been for Joshua. Joshua and his Kaisar. Wait, what about Kaisar? 
When Joshua first came to us, he was servant to a man he called Kaisar. He led his master's armies, and we were ready to follow him into war. Then he lost his master's army to a tribe called Ensiar, the Sunset People. <laughs> when he returned, he was as you saw him, burned, broken, but changed. He led us away from Kaisar, led us to our own destiny in Zion. So I assume that conversation is meant to be had bef well, after you meet Joshua, because, you know, he mentions you seeing Joshua, which hasn't happened yet. Besides, you know, that cutscene. Anyway, what did Joshua do for you? If it wasn't for Joshua, the dead horses would still be the whipping boys of the Zion Valley. He taught us how to hold our territory, to protect ourselves. He guided us away from Kaisar. And showed us how Kaisar would have destroyed us. What's with the shell casings in your club? We decorate our clubs with them to honor Joshua Graham. They were the weapons of his old tribe. So now they are ours. Can't say they seem that dangerous to me. But Joshua says they won the West. See, this is this is stuff that I like. Sometimes it's kind of hard to do stuff about, you know, the tribes, because, like, I played the Borderlands, uh, one of the Borderlands 2 DLCs relatively recently. Well, I say that, but it was a year ago. Um, it was before the fucking COVID lockdown, and that feels like four years by now. But um, <laughs> in one of the Borderlands 2 DLCs, you fight a bunch of, you know, savages, you know, they're, they're, they've got face paint and skull masks and they do voodoo and they jump around and shout Ooga Booga and Ooh, Ooh, little, uh, little, ooh, you know, makes you, makes you tug at your collar, makes you, you know, go ooh a little bit, but actually getting into it and, and discussing it. And it's not like, ah, we white people will now go observe these poor fools or even the, we civilized people will go look at these, you know, weird third world country folks look at how weird it is that they live but you no know, the development of a culture and world building for fuck's sake is so cool and it's very simple just takes a lot of note writing but yeah uh follows talk is a really good example of it because like he obviously looks like a stereotypical native american but if you look at him there's a lot of stuff that's very modern about him and stuff that is completely new like the combination of leather armor that like someone would wear to fight in a melee combat and stuff to combat guns and the idea of a gun like the old baseball hat that is now a a, a headpiece like it's it's great anyway do you remember anything about joshua from before he became your leader didn't believe he was the same man he was humbler he wanted to protect not destroy so people that played new vegas uh in, in in its entirety met a man called the legate who is the proper final boss of the game uh and he is a badass motherfucker he is almost completely indestructible but the thing is that dude's name is actually legate lanius and as we've learned joshua was the other legate Joshua might have been tougher than the actual final boss. A lot of people didn't really like uh, Honest Hearts. Um, and that's fair. I'm not sure it's the strongest one, but I do enjoy it. But most people agree that if nothing else, Joshua Graham is fucking fantastic. Go with fortune, friend. All right, I'm done talking. Like, this looks like a big garage door that should just open, right? See, I never played too much of the DLCs, um, and in many cases I didn't own them. So a lot of this will all be new for me. Oh shit, yeah. So look, you can drink this water and it doesn't even have radiation in it. And water without radiation is nearly... 
I mean, I guess it doesn't really show up at all in New Vegas. See, I know about this, and I've seen people playing it, but I have not played this DLC myself. So if I get lost, that's why. Because I only... I, I primarily know it's secondhand. So yeah, um... I actually wanted to talk about, uh... Feels good to be doing some actual scouting. <laughs> well, technically you're following me, huh? So one of the developers, I think it was uh, Joshua Joshua Sawyer is his name, I believe, uh, has been very vocal about New Vegas. He was one of the guys who directed this game. And I remember him talking about, uh, or really complaining about There we go. I remember him complaining about um, a lot of the tribals. Yeah, just keep him busy. This intense stare down. Nice. He wanted the tribals to be more like racially diverse to show that like they're really a melting pot. Um, but Bethesda said that they couldn't do it. And he got mad because he was like, how can you not do it? Why, why do you not have that technology? And he, and he was just really disappointed in them. And like, that's, that's fantastic to hear. And like, he doesn't go in like super hard against them, but I guess that's a uh, part of what comes from, I fucking love these paintings. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, what comes of you know, not working for a company, just being contracted by them to make a game. You can just go off. I hear some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant thunder lizard that people live inside? I already made the joke about that. It's a Tyrannosaurus, not a Brontosaurus. A Tyrannosaurus means tyrant lizard, not just tyrant. I realized I've made a oopsies. Let's save so I don't fuck this up. And you know what? Let's wait for a day. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure his name is Josh Sawyer. He often goes by Jay Sawyer. Hell yeah. Oh, God, look at that. No light pollution, man. That's the shit. So we're following the river in. Nice. I can do that. I can work with that. Um, so, yeah, as far as I know, he's called Josh Sawyer because he goes by Jay Sawyer, but I can't remember right now, and I don't want to be wrong. But he also uh, had one of the first mods for New Vegas. And a lot of people consider that to be the canon way to play New Vegas. Because, like, when developers make a mod... That's not the way to the camp. My marker is literally pointing me this way, bro. Yep, there it is. Hell yeah, I love that. But yeah, when developers make a mod, is that not just canon? I want the XP, that's why. But yeah, and uh, Obsidian has in the past done games that didn't get finished, but they are finished through mods. Um, KOTOR 2 is probably the best example. In the base game, it's kind of disappointing but with the restored content mod, which doesn't really do much. It's just minor bug fixes to make sure the game works. And then it 
reactivate some stuff that should have been in the game already. Uh, it is it is a game that is better than the first KOTOR, and the first KOTOR already kicked ass. But yeah, Josh Sawyer's mod changes a bunch of stuff. I think it makes the game... It makes combat and some other stuff in the game way harder. I'm not sure about that. I don't know if I like that. It changes how durability and weight uh, works. So yeah, I'm just... I'm not really sure if I vibe with that. I know why he makes those changes, but I don't really want to... Here we are. Joshua's just ahead there. In the angel cave. The angel cave. I'm just not really sure about it. Um, it's interesting, though. As an idea, it's cool. All right. Cook up some stuff. Rushing water. Jet and purified water. That's funny. Plus 50% tax speed. Wowzers. And some good old classic, good old fashioned healing powder. And you can see that they're drinking out of washed out soda bottles. And Goot is probably a. Uh, Mutation of good morning just turned into one word. They spar. Cool. What? Oh, that's... Is this a Wild Wasteland thing? That they're just fighting like this? Or did I miss something that I was supposed to see? Like... Did a UFO just pass by? Who's this guy? What's he up to? Yeah, I can't. can't exactly parse that yet, but maybe I'll pick up on it. Let's go see Joshua Graham. Hoy. Auslander Zuka, Joshua Graham. The Atlander looks for Joshua Graham. You know our tongue. Smart, Auslander. Joshua in high place of fame. You show respect, Utman. Joshua is greatest warrior. You show him no respect. He show you thunder and fire. Okay, thanks for that. I would sure hate to be shown thunder and fire. Ha, ha. Funny, Auslander. Maybe soon dead. Right. Yeah, this guy. So in the intro of this game, you are given a psychological test to to make your to make your build, essentially, much like in the intro of Morrowind. Um some odd things about the civilized God. outside Zion. Whoops. Sure. Okay. I'll wait behind. Uh so in the intro to this game, you do a Rorschach test included with all the stuff and one of the options one of the things looks like two bears giving each other a high five and you know that's not one of the options and one of the very first mods for this game along with the Joshua Sawyer rebalancing mod is the two bears high fiving mod that just allows you to say that much better now I won't get gunned down the minute I walk in. And because of that, the developers of this game named this guy Two Bears High Fiving because they thought that that was hilarious. It also fits with the naming convention of the Dead Horses. Well, with them sounding like stereotypical Native American names, like Little Bighorn. Okay. This fucking guy. Have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, White legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting. But I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group. But you have my sympathy. I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion. Even Gentiles. 
but we can't expect God to do all the work. There's the meme. How do you know so much about what happened to me? The dead horses are capable scouts. Nothing passes into or out of Zion without my hearing of it. I came with the Happy Trails Caravan Company to make contact with the new Canaanites. Happy Trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed. Its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar. The White Legs oh. want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the new Canaanites, almost assuredly because of me. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other new Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now, not with everything that's going on. So... How you pronounce Caesar's name is kind of a shibboleth in this game. Because the actual historical Roman way to pronounce it is Caesar. And that's where the Russian and German words for leader originate. Uh, Tsar and Caesar, respectively. Um, and I learned that in high school because we were reading... Uh, I was teaching a class on... Yes, in high school I did teach a class. I was the teacher's assistant for some sophomores when I was a senior. But the teacher was one of them cool-ass English teachers that you get, and you're like, oh, yeah, you're cool. And she was like, all right, Connor's going to teach the class, since that was the name I went by at the time. Uh, so some fucking dickhead kids were pronouncing it Kaisar. But as it happened, they were right. That's the real way to pronounce it. And apparently Caesar is more common because of Shakespeare and how you know Shakespeare pronounced it. You know, what with the, the play and all. So, in the wasteland, you can, it's kind of a shibboleth in that you can see who is in on Caesar or who knows about, you know, the Caesar. Because if, like, they fear or respect him, they call him Caesar, you know? So, somewhere dominated by Caesar, like this place used to, or somewhere that is, you know, openly in the Legion, like, you know, all of Caesar's places, call him Caesar. But people who don't know about Caesar call him Caesar. And Joshua Graham intentionally fucked up his name to say fuck you to, to the Kaisar. Because Joshua Graham, more than anyone, would know how to pronounce a guy's name if you worked for him. God damn. Also, this animation is so clean. It gives you something to look at. while uh, it's, it's really good because it gives you something to look at while you're talking to him. Because normally you don't really get that chance. Uh, sorry, normally you don't get the ability to have something to look at during one of these because time freezes so nothing happens as opposed to Skyrim or uh, Fallout 4. But this animation, it's almost hypnotic. I'm getting like drawn into it. Anyway. I'm one of them good fellers, so I'm not going to leave without offering to help. What can I do? You're a good name. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Follow Shock and help you find your way around the valley. He's inexperienced, but he knows enough of our language to ignore the taboos about pre-war building. <laughs> All right. Now, just so everyone knows what we're dealing with here. Mr. Graham is not to be fucked with. But 
Let's do one more. And you know what? Why don't we just... Okay. Now you've done it. Now you've done it. Yeah, Joshua Graham's kind of a scary motherfucker. <laughs> Okay, that was probably on me. Like, you can't heal fast enough to keep up with him. Look, there's my head over there. He shot my skull out of my head. So yeah, he's got a big stack of uh, pistols that he's just working on here. Look, I'm Joshua Graham too now. Whoop. And you can see that he has a lot of tools and miscellaneous shit in here. You know, he's a very smart guy, just that he has to work in a cave. It's chess. Is Joshua Graham a big chessman, you think? Oh boy. Hmm. Oh, I can just hump it down here. La da da. See, so yeah, Joshua Graham is one fucking scary guy. Like, you can see that even shooting at him with my best weapon, I barely scratched him. But yeah, he's a very interesting character. Some people were even disappointed by him because you get to him and he's just this, he's just a guy, you know? Right behind you. Like, he, he's just such a regular dude and yet he's so fucking, like, powerful. But, like, at his core, he's just like a regular boring dude. Like, he's got a very um, interesting cadence in his voice. He doesn't, too, like, do too much talking. He's just, you know, he's, he's just here and he's vibing. All right. That should help. Get my stuff back on. All right. <laughs> you guys. So maybe that isn't meant to be a uh, wild wasteland thing. And you can see a lot of this uh, wall painting iconography echoed in the Dead Horses tattoos. Oh yeah, Joshua Graham himself was actually something that uh, people complained about. Not because he's so mild-mannered, which is the point of his character, by the way. Uh, but Joshua Sawyer himself complained about this again. Uh, he was just talking about so I finally get to explore all those taboo places without the other scouts yelling at me. Can't wait. <laughs> nice. Not entirely sure where to go. See, the only thing about him is that he's a little above you, so you kind of have to look up to him. 
But he starts talking to you from so far away that you barely notice it. Yeah, he's just a regular guy. Um, but yeah, Joshua Sawyer complained about his uh, his character model. Because he's, if you look at him, you can see that he doesn't really look burnt up underneath his bandages. And if you hack the game to get his bandages off, uh, they're just bandages over a regular guy. Just a regular, boring old guy. Which is not intended. Because obviously the, the point that Joshua Graham is meant to look odd, but ultimately is a regular fellow. Alright, let's see how we get down here. The quick way would be this, right? Holy shit, I can't believe that worked. I've got my proper recording shit, meaning I've even got earbuds now, and it's making my voice sound even weirder. There can't really be a place where people go into big buildings and give away all their money just to watch someone flip paper squares on a table. Is that I'm talking about a bank? Or no, it's it's a casino. It's fucking New Vegas. This game set in. Whoa. Here we go. I hope you've got medicine better than some sticky. Can I get some backup healing? Wow, he's getting fucked up. Just what the medicine man ordered. Just what the medicine man ordered. Good as new. All right, that's enough of that. That was not a good sound. Oh shit. Oh, you're fine though, right? Yeah, he is fine. Well, good. Okay. Let's get myself back up to full. Sean bought some stuff, hell yeah. Alright. Let's keep on going. Yeah, I'll be honest. I like all the options in New Vegas because you really do get the chance to talk stuff out. Like, um, I didn't bring this up, but that, that final boss against the Legat Lanius, yeah, you can actually just talk your way out of that fight. So if you spec yourself for speech, you can just talk to the Legat. Which is fantastic because he has a shitload of health and it is, as mentioned, practically indestructible. Yoink. However, despite that, I do prefer... Oh, this thing looks like crap. You will be food for my real hat. Bad hat. Carry all those bottle caps anyway. They jangle like crazy. Oh, that's gonna bug me. You got me. Jesus. Yeah, it's a DLC. DLCs, you can always tell that they're supposed to be DLCs because they're way harder. I feel like he's gonna die and I'm not gonna be able to do anything about it, Falls Chalk is. <laughs> Alright, well now I've got him, I can just fucking cart him around with me, right? Who's the other? Oh, he's good. You're fine, dude. What are you talking about? God, again, that scared me. Well then, let's get to trading. 
So your character was known as Courier Six, and that's canonically the real name for that guy. Um, because obviously you can't name someone in in a game where you have a character creator. But publicly, he's known as Courier Six, since that was his job prior to, you know, all this. Where am I going and what am I doing again? Oh, not too far even. Um, but yeah, he was actually called Courier Six because he was the sixth of many couriers. And he was actually a last second replacement. I love how upon him dying, gravity begins to take effect on him, even though he was in water, and that's not how that works. This is why your own two feet are better than any cart, whether it's pulled by critters or goes on its own, like the shadow of a ghost. I'm trying to look at his... Ah, oh, never mind. Right. So this contains a lot of uh, stuff to make bombs. The compass is broken. Uh, repair with parts. Replacing the sensor rather than bypassing it, you can make it easier. I'll leave it alone. Oh, whoops. Hell yeah. Oh, well. That would have been easier. Hey, we did it though. Okay. I want science. Yeah, I want both of those up. Okay. More health from crap. Heave ho. Yeah, my last uh, level where I got a perk, I actually put it into intense training, so I'm getting some new shit that I couldn't get before. Oh, wow, that's super good, but I don't want to put on light armor yet. Though it will help me Damn. I'm going to need strong back at some point because I'm seriously a pack rat. Finesse is good. I don't know if here and now is even worth getting anything. Yeah, Misfortune and the Mysterious Stranger. For those who uh, don't know, when you use VATS, the Vault Assisted Targeting System, these two have a chance of showing up. And the Mysterious Stranger is a staple of the series for a little while now. But you can see that Misfortune's art is a lot cleaner compared to all the other ones. Because all of these are actually scanned in from the original Fallout games or from Fallout 3. Whereas this one is from New Vegas specifically. Adamantium Skeleton might be really necessary in uh, hard mode just because of how it all works. Center of mass is important. Yeah, fuck. These are all so good. I don't know. Because eventually, this game has a maximum level. So eventually you need to pick what you're not going to get. And that's a lot of things. It's like fucking Baskin Robbins. But however, I am slightly RPing with this build. So I am going to get Lady Killer. All right. All right, cool. One more sip. And we're heading this way then.
Cool. Let's get the hell out of here. Did I finish talking about how even though New Vegas has a bunch of good, you know, ways to go about things, I still like combat the best? Like, I just, I really do enjoy getting in scraps. As you can tell by my nearly maxed gun skill. Uh-oh. Okay. I hear some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant thunder lizard people live inside? Well, I did shut him up. That could be useful. That could be very useful. See, in hardcore mode, um, my followers also have a good chance of dying. Bone breaker, huh? Let's put something a little stronger on. Uh, actually, let's get some snack first. And then... I don't even know why I have this. For other stock golf noise. I don't even know what that means either. Oh, they poisoned me. Shit. There's one down. Oh, wow. That's actually a that's a pretty good effect. Okay, I gotta be careful, because now I'm not regenerating health. Much better. One of the only times I've ever blocked in this game. Okay. And now we loot the bodies. Hell yeah. I'm trying to use... Uh, yeah. That should give me 60 health, I think. That should give me 24. Much better. Don't I have... I do. Nice. Convenient. That combat pass thing always knows where north is, huh? Even if it can't see the stars? I'm trying to look and see what's on his head here. I think those are just fabric samples, like cut out of like dresses. Since this game takes uh God, the world before was more like the nineteen fifties America. So yeah, those would be like dresses like of that type. That's kind of funny. I'm aware that I've been recording for a while, but I, I want to keep going. Why did that happen? I keep noticing him just like pulling it to the side. Yeah, like that. And just shooting it into the air like he's trying to fire a warning shot. Yep. Very vertical DLC. Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. That's not good at all. Yeah, those things are one of the scariest fucking enemies. Cazadors and Bloatflies are not to be taken lightly. I was like, oh, what's this doofus got himself into now? Oh, shit. <laughs> that was me. Now, where did it go? Hello? He has a door. Okay, well, that's fine, I guess. 
So because of the limitations of this game engine, you can't um, you can't swing something that's meant to be thrown. Uh, so you can't like uh, butt stroke someone. You know you can't pistol whip. You can't hit someone with a gun. And for something like a throwing spear or tomahawk, you can't hit someone with it. Uh, and there's an interesting workaround that they did for that. That ended to something kind of funny. Um, in an enemy's inventory, there will actually be two versions of weapons. Or two similar weapons so that it still looks thematically the same. Um, so, like, they have axes and throwing axes, which are separately tomahawks and hatchets. Um, but sometimes they just do a thing where those are actually, uh, they actually have the same, oh boy, what? What is happening here? There we go. Oh my god, it did nothing. Okay, I'm getting better with this. Oh, and another one joins the fight. But yeah, so like a Caesar's Legion fella that pokes you with a spear, but then throws it. He actually has two versions of the same weapon in the same, in his inventory. But you can only loot one off of him. And this led to them uh, wanting Joshua Graham to pistol whip dudes. However, um, as I mentioned, that proves to be a problem. So if you hack the game and take a look at Joshua's uh, inventory, you can actually see that in there. He's got a... Uh, He's got a version of his pistol that is just for hitting things and a version that is for shooting. So whenever he hits someone, it's him unequipping and unequipping his real pistol and re-equipping that one and then going back to shooting. There we go. God, there's just more and more of them. Oh, now there's four. Hey, I'm seeing double. There's four white legs. Simpsons joke, pardon me. All right. Let's take a little step back. That would have been good to a drink a couple of minutes ago. I really want to be so good at melee. What? I, I really want to get so good at melee that I can shrug off gunfire and ignore that. In the real world, not in uh, not in Fallout, I mean. Like, because normally Fallout plays it pretty straight. But in the quote-unquote realistic mode... You have a lot more uh, shenanigans that can happen with guns and gunfire. Take another anti-venom. Eat all my yucca fruit. I needed those, didn't I? For the, yeah, for that thing. Oh, whatever, I can find more. All right. Yeah, why not? And then we'll... See, both of these are light armors. I like that. I'll be able to use that. Oh, good. More yucca. Okay.
patch up the hide armor. Put these together. Put these together. All right. Feeling pretty good about that. Uh, let's just wait until. Hmm. Don't like that. I don't like that. There's an. Okay. Why don't we just... Why take a chance? Because I really don't want this to be a problem. Hmm. Oh boy. Oh, now I'm doing it to me. I don't e I'm not even sure I'm fucking hitting this thing. I'll just start going this way. Follow this path. I was trying to wait for Follows Chalk, but apparently he's nowhere. Zion Fisting Lodge. I think this should still work, right? Yep, there he is. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. That'll do. Good old gun jams. For as long as I remember, the dead horses have thought the places of the old world were taboo. Doesn't look so spooky to me. All right, I've got to fix this. Because if nothing else, my fucking LP is going to get fucked up. Mm. It's painful to use a doctor's bag like that. I love all of these chairs are ripped in the same pattern. I know it's asset reuse, but come on, guys. So I know that um, Skyrim actually came second, like after New Vegas. But originally in the Elder Scrolls, The Elder Scrolls had a weird esoteric lockpicking mechanic that was just kind of weird where you would put a, a pick into the thing and you just kind of try to plump it up. Well, then. It's weird. To, it's difficult to explain. But yeah, that's what Oblivion looks like. Um, Morrowind just had a raw skill check and it would roll some dice behind the, behind the DM screen. I'll keep that on me, actually. Let's offload some of these. Yeah, that's pretty heavy. All right. Hello. Hmm, well. Oh, God. All right, come back, pack horse. Well, then, let's get to trading. You know what? You can have this one. I'll keep the other one. It's a 10 pound melee weapon, God's sake. Actually, you know what? I've done two, and it's raining now. I've done two objectives in this episode. I'll take a break. So, uh, I've been Alfred. I'll see you all next time. Uh, pff, pff, pff. 
Oh yeah, this has been Fall New Vegas, and uh, this is Honest Hearts. Um, see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>